Hey guys, it's James Daner, and today we're gonna talk about vetting your operator, making sure you're not giving people money that shouldn't have it, and how to make sure that your money's secure on your next investment. So we are outside of our flip that we just completed where I was the operator and Ashley Kerr from Bigger Pockets Real Estate Rookies was the passive investor and she invested in our process. So being a passive investor and investing in someone else's project can be an amazing thing. You get a high return, you get the reward out of the benefit of the property and you don't have to do any work, but you have to be careful. So we're gonna take you through the steps on how to vet your operator correctly so your money's protected. So why would you wanna invest in someone else's deal and be passive? Passive. You know, when you're the operator yourself, you have full control of whatever you want to do. In Washington, we run about 200 to 250 projects a year, whether it's multifamily, fix and flip, uh, development. So we have hands-on experience. But as an investor, I'm always looking to expand how I can work my capital and look at different markets. I know how to run this business in Washington State, but I don't know how to do it in other states. For example, I just invested in someone else's flip in Scottsdale, Arizona, because I didn't have the resources. I like the market, I like the trends, I like the policies, but I don't know how to fix and flip or find that next deal. So I partnered up with Kara Beckman from Beckman House and I invested the money and she ran the whole project. So I also didn't have to deal with all the headaches of what you have to do inside of a renovation, which is designing it, ripping the house apart, hiring the contractors, the stuff that can be kind of a pain in the butt. So being a passive investor can be a good thing, but you have to make sure that your money is protected. Before you invest in that next operator, you wanna narrow down what you wanna actually invest in as well. So there are so many different types of operators in the market. There's people that do fix and flip projects where they're finding a property, doing the renovation and selling it, and then you get a pref plus an equity split. There's developers that will do the same type of thing where they're finding the land, building out the site, and you can invest in a percentage of that project. There's apartment syndicators where they're raising capital to buy a large apartment building. You're investing in a portion of the equity and they're gonna give you a pref and a return based on that. So again, there's so many different types of operators out there. There's countless amounts, but it always comes down to vetting them correctly and making sure that they have the right operations and the right underwriting in play and then you can safely invest. So there's five key things that I always do when vetting my operator before I give them that check and invest in their deal. The first thing I do is I wanna know what their background is and experience. How many deals have they completed? How did those deals go? Which deals have gone bad? Because every operator has a bad deal. And also, I wanna know how many deals they have in progress right now because I don't want them over leveraged on their time. The second thing I always do when vetting my operator is I check out their own financials. I wanna make sure that they have good credit, that they've paid their bills. So I wanna make sure that they have a balanced asset sheet and they have liquidity. They know how to manage their money. If they are living paycheck to paycheck and spending it all and not reinvesting it, it's kind of a concern. I want to invest with operators that do what I do and reinvest my money. So the third thing I like to do is go verify their operations and their infrastructure behind their business. Anytime I've ever invested in another person's projects, I go out and physically see how do they run their job sites? Who's working on what? Do they use project managers and superintendents? How do they do their reporting? The more infrastructure that your operator has, the smoother your deal is gonna go. The fourth thing that I always verify is their paperwork. Real estate is all based on contracts and terms. If I'm working with an operator that paperwork may be a little sloppy, that's gonna be a big concern with me. I wanna make sure that if they had any agreements drafted, they were drafted by an attorney. I'm gonna have them reviewed by my own attorney to make sure that it is all legal for that state's laws. If you're investing in a different state, sometimes you need to hire legal that work in that market. For example, when I invested in Kara's project in Scottsdale, Arizona, I didn't have my Washington state attorney review the paperwork, I had an Arizona lawyer do it. And lastly, the thing that I always check out is how do they underwrite their deal? That operator is bringing me a financial package. They are giving me certain terms based on a certain equity position or position in that asset. I need to be able to verify that their numbers are correct. Even if I have the greatest operator in the world and they know how to run a job site, they know how to fix up the property, they know how to lease it out, but their math is wrong, that's gonna be a major issue. So anytime I'm investing out of state or in an area I don't know or can't underwrite myself, I contact local brokers and appraisers just to verify the information. This may be seen tedious, but for me, I need to know what is going on and the math behind the deal in an area I don't know. 
So investing in someone else's deal or an operator can be an amazing thing. You can make the return. You can get involved in real estate and do none of the hard work. You don't need to find the deal. You don't need to put the contractor in play. You don't have to worry about lining up your own financing. You're finding the right person that you can invest with, but you need to be careful. Be wary and don't just give anybody money. You need to thoroughly vet these operators. I don't care how big they are on social media or online. You, or if they're your best friend, make sure that they have the right processes and experiences. Real estate investing can go any which way. It can go really well, but it also can go really bad. And in any one of those situations, you need a good operator, maybe for them to maximize that deal correctly or to mitigate the risk of a deal. The more you vet your operator, the more protected your investment will be. So thanks for tuning in and learning about how to vet your operator correctly. Click like and subscribe below. And for more free real estate education, check us out on Jay Dane Flips on Instagram. And I will see you guys next time.